Alright, um, hi everyone. Today I thought I would do another video kind of like the one I did about the moguls, the mogul military, but today I'll be talking about the uh, Safavid dynasty of uh, Persia or Iran, however you'd like. Um, not really as well known, I think, compared to the Ottomans or the Mughals. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, yeah, just not as very well known. Uh, the dynasty existed from around uh, 1501 to um, 1723 uh, when the Persia was invaded by Afghans. Uh, the country was widely devastated. Uh, and then after the Afghan period, uh, the Qajars ruled in uh, Persia uh, for some time, uh, but uh, they lasted, uh, you know, about two centuries, quite a long time, and they were the ones that made uh, Persia uh, Shi'i Muslim. Uh, so today, we probably all, uh, most of us are probably familiar with the uh, quite uh, infamous uh, government in Iran today, uh, which is Shia Muslim, um, and uh, but that was not the case historically for Persia, Islamic Persia, uh, until the Safavids. It was mainly Sunni, and even during the Safavid uh, period, a lot of the countryside was still Sunni. Uh, so, you know these religious. Transformations are always usually contentious, uh, especially in the Islamic world, uh, early modern Islamic world. Uh, where does the name come from? Where were they founded? Uh, the Safavids started as a kind of messianic military movement uh, in what's today Azerbaijan, uh, so here on this map, Ardabil and Tabriz, that area, and it's led by uh, this young, uh, this guy on the left, this is Shah Ismail I, the founder of the dynasty, and uh, he rises to prominence through um, the this messianic Shi'i movement, uh, and also he's able to draw in a lot of the nomadic uh, Turkomans that lived in this Azerbaijan and eastern Anatolia area, and uh, he's able to build up a movement and an army, and gradually he starts to uh, conquer uh, you know, what we today think of as Iran. Uh, but he, he quite quickly um, makes an enemy of himself with the Ottoman Empire. Um, and this is because a lot of the nomadic Turkomans in the Ottoman Empire are kind of resent uh, Ottoman rule. Uh, they don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to be um, under, you know, control of Ottoman religious authorities necessarily, so they start to join, and these are uh, what become uh, known as, in Ottoman terms, uh, as the Kizilbash, which means redheads. Uh, sometimes you also see the Persian term uh, Surkser, uh, it means the same thing, redhead, um, because of the headgear that they wore, kind of a red uh, headdress, and, and we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, what I what what do I mean by that? Uh, but they turned because of this conflict. Uh, Eastern Anatolia becomes a contentious frontier zone between the Ottomans and the Safavids. And uh, you know, oftentimes in the Western kind of literature about the Ottomans, we tend to think that the Ottomans were, you know, mainly concerned uh, with you know defeating. Uh, the Christian powers, uh, and of course they tr devoted a tremendous amount of energy to fighting Christian powers, there's no doubt about that, but uh, in terms of the religious rhetoric, 
that was uh, probably in some ways more heated uh, against the uh, Safavids because they posed a direct threat to the idea, uh, especially uh, espoused by starting under Suleiman's reign, that the you know the Ottomans are the leaders of the Sunni Muslim world, and the uh, you know the Safavids are um, you know a challenge to that basically that they are heretics. Uh, you'll see this in the in the Ottoman chronicles that they're heretics and uh, that they are you know have false beliefs. Um, and uh, there's a lot of technical reasons for that uh, in, in Islamic theology, but no need to go into that here. But it is interesting to note that uh, the Safavid elite were Turkic uh, and spoke Azeri Turkish as their main language. So uh, administratively, the empire used Persian. Literature was all in Persian. Uh, but these Kizilbash, these uh, Turkoman uh, tribes, tribal elites, uh, they all spoke uh, Azeri Turkish, so which is a dialect quite close to uh, Western uh, Turkish, Anatolian Turkish. So, and uh, we also see here, uh, this map is nice because it shows their other main enemy, uh, the Uzbek uh, Bukhara Khanate or Sultanate. Um, and uh, they were also fighting with the Safavids. Uh, they were also Sunni Muslim, and they would try. They tried at various times to coordinate with the Ottomans to kind of fight a two-front uh, war. So interesting. Uh, now we'll go to. Well, there's Ismail. This is him holding an audience, but you can see uh, from other videos I've done about uh, Mughal and uh, Ottoman kind of military clothing. Uh, very similar, kind of a Turkish look. The kaftan, uh, Shah Ismail is there. He's got a sword, you know, curved scimitar. Um, and you see these guys as well that are meeting him have their, looks like one of them is wearing, yeah, he's wearing his quiver. Uh, let's see if I can maybe make this a little clearer. Um, see there, that's the quiver with his arrows. Um, but not all that different from um, from the other, uh, you know, Islamic dynasties we've looked at. That's the map, sorry about that. Uh, this is what they displaced. Uh, I should have maybe started with this, but this is the group that they displaced, uh, the Safavids in, in Iran and, and uh, eastern kind of Anatolia. Uh, this, this map is a little optimistic, I would say, but this was the uh, Akkoyunlu, the white, white sheep, uh, which was a tribal kind of confederation of these Turkish uh, warrior tribes. Um, I guess this is a good time to bring up uh, why the Safavids uh, don't last as long as the Ottomans. Um, and it's kind of related to this uh, Akkoyunlu state. So uh, Iran uh, is quite a difficult country um, in terms of geography. Uh, there's only so much arable land, and most of it is in uh, Azerbaijan, so on the Caspian coast. Uh, here uh, on this map where Artable and Tabriz are uh, in this coastline, uh, you see Derbent also, uh, good pasture lands and quite, uh, quite agriculturally rich. Uh, also here on the coast of uh, the Caspian uh, behind uh, these mountains and also in the uh, Fars province. And uh, no one can also forget that uh, Mesopotamia, uh, it's the Fertile Crescent, still was in those times, uh, was also quite rich. So that's why the Safavids, uh, at various points, try to capture Baghdad. And they are successful at one point in time. 
against the Ottomans. They hold it for a little while. Uh, but um, the stuff is important uh, because it, uh, to know in terms of the military because it meant that the uh, Safavids never quite were able to get uh, a large, you know, significant agricultural production. Uh, they were not able to really centralize because everything was done with the Shahs negotiating with these Kizilbash uh, tribal elites. And uh, like in the medieval European world, uh, when you have a king that had to negotiate with the estates, uh, it doesn't always work. So uh, unlike the Ottomans, which develop a pretty robust uh, system of uh, you know, central administration, uh, you know, education in the palace to create administrators and governors, uh, you know, way that, that know how to both administer directly and also negotiate with local rulers uh, to, to make sure that the uh, man provinces are managed. Uh, the Safavids don't quite do that, and, and, and that's related to this terrain issue, is that just Iran is hard to navigate. Uh, everything has to be done over land. And also, in um, central Iran, there's no navigable river there's, uh, or, or significant rivers. So uh, that's also kind of problematic when you think about uh, trying to move men, supplies, communication. Another issue with, that the Safavids have is uh, they don't have a capital that's uh, fixed for a period of for a long period of time so the ottomans had uh, two capitals uh, they have uh, istanbul or constantinier uh, constantinier of course uh, and they also had before that uh, they have uh, borsa uh, which is the but again those were fixed capitals it was a political center uh, the safavids shift capitals a few times uh, but their main, their greatest capital is, let's see if I have my other picture, uh, I don't have it, but uh, their greatest capital is from, uh, sh created by Shah Abbas, who reigns from 1588 to 1629, uh, and that's in Isfahan, which I don't know is on this, yeah, here it is, Isfahan. Uh, that becomes the ca uh, Safavid uh, capital from the reign of Shah Abbas, starting in 1588 to uh, the end of the dynasty, some uh, in the early 18th century. And uh, Isfahan today is still quite a beautiful city, I think. Okay, that was a lot of uh, introduction, but it's important to uh, set the context uh, before we talk about the military and, and the uh, some, some pictures. Uh, so here's one. This is an Ottoman miniature, uh, but uh, this is uh, gives you an idea of uh, what the Safavids kind of looked like. So here on the right, these are the Ottomans. Uh, we have some Janissaries firing their muskets. Um, we have the Ottoman cavalry. And uh, here you can see some of the, what they mean meant by the red head, this red kind of turban that some of them are wearing. Uh, and uh, they're fleeing back across this river, it looks like. Um, and uh, quite similar visually to the Ottoman cavalry, really. Uh, not that, uh, not all that different in terms of, um, you know, lances, the very, some of them have the heavier barding on their horses. Um, and uh, they have a lot of, uh, generally they have a lot of horse archers, that's their main thing. But they do have musketeers, so uh, under Shah Abbas, he creates, tries to create a kind of system similar to the uh, Janissaries, they're called Ghulams. I mean, that had been an institution in uh, in Persian Muslim dynasties for some time, uh, but uh, tries to create a system like the Janissaries, and that's mostly drawn from uh, Georgians, 
the, the country and the Caucasus uh, and Armenians, uh, interestingly enough. And like the Janissaries, they become Muslim uh, and they uh, become kind of an infantry component to the Safavid army, but uh, Shah Abbas's problem was he never quite had enough time to uh, implement it, and uh, it was always difficult to uh, centralize power, even for him. And he was he was quite an effective uh, emperor of the uh, of Iran. Uh, now we'll go to another image I have. Uh, let me open the. Uh, open another page so let me uh, do that bear with me for a moment here okay here we have another uh, a lot of these uh, Persian miniature paintings I found are on um, these auction sites. That's why I have to open the browser to do this. Uh, because the ones on the web, on, on image search, the quality is also not very good. Anyway, so this is uh, another image giving you an idea of what the uh, Safavid army may have looked like. Uh, this is from a miniature painting depicting uh, Shah Ismail I fighting the fighting the, I think this is the Akkoyan Lu that they're fighting. Uh, let's see what it say. I believe it's the Akkoyan Lu. Uh, but anyway, you can see, uh, again, quite similar to Ottoman and uh, Mughal, and now Mughal military as we've looked at. Um, you've got, um, this is Shah Ismail, uh, in the position of an honor in the painting. Um, you can see we've got horse archers in that Turkish style. Um, and we, But we also have some of them, uh, one of them has a uh, heavy, uh, the, the Safids do have heavy cavalry, so there's one um, attacking with a, a lance on an armored horse. Uh, and you can see the their enemies. Some of them are armored with an unarmored horse. Some of them are look like lighter cavalry. So, uh, and some of them have a sword. So again, uh, sorry to keep repeating myself, but uh, quite typical of a Turkish kind of cavalry army in this period of uh, you know 16th century, 15th century. Uh, not so many guns. Uh, because the Safavids uh, suffer a pretty serious defeat in 1514 against uh, Yavu Sultan Selim, who uh, really is uh, threatened by this, uh, you know, uh, religious military movement. So they go and wage war on Ismail, and it's uh, partially it's the superior Ottoman firepower at the Battle of uh, Chaldiran that uh, has the Ottomans uh, defeat the Safavids. Uh, and uh, the Safavids do have firearms, uh, but again, you know, it's not always implemented evenly, uh, and they don't quite have the same standing army that the Ottomans are able to build up over time. So, not much more to say here uh, on the from this painting at least. I guess I will say, um, you know, you think, uh, well, this is probably a stylized painting, uh, you know, they they haven't, uh, you know, this they probably looked a little more muted in actual battle. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know about that. Uh, I think they did, some of these armies uh, did tend to wear very elaborate uh, clothing into battle because uh, in the Ottoman sources at least there's a lot of talk of um, you know being embellished with uh, these uh, robes of honor uh, and wearing you know stuff that's set with jewels 
Uh, of course, that's for the more you know the the, the officers and the, the uh, higher lo- higher ranking officers. But um, you know, tend to think that they they probably did wear very colorful and uh, decorated clothing like this in the battle. Uh, but you know, we can only infer so much. Uh, you know, have to look at uh, probably artifacts to get a better sense of uh, what you know what 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 they wore and what survived and all that. Uh, so, okay, uh, so those are the images. Uh, not as many as other times, so I apologize. But uh, this is what I was able to get. That was a nice picture. But uh, look quickly at some miniatures. So the only Safavid range uh, that I know of is from Curacao miniatures, and I. I hope I can get some of these uh, soon. And they have a nice write-up on their site about the Safavid uh, army. Uh, we have um, different uh, figures. We have some levies. Have, uh, these are the Kizilbosh with bows and swords. I've shown these on the channel before, so I'm not going to uh, spend too much time, and, and you know you can look at them on your own. We have some with lances. There's a command that's with Abbas. So uh, we've got. Turkomans. That's some regular musketeers. Nicely painted with red, uh, red uh, uniforms. Uh, some of their musketeers. And some artillery. Oh, these are nice. I think uh, I like these a lot. I haven't read about these, but uh, okay. Um, I think uh, I will. Uh, I think uh, it's a good time to wrap up the video here. Um, if you want to learn more about the Safavids, uh, I recommend the books of uh, Roger Savory. Uh, he was an Orientalist. Uh, and he translated uh, the uh, a major Safavid chronicle in English. It's the uh, history of Shah Abbas by uh, Iskander Bey Munshi. Uh, it's in two volumes, but it's it covers more than just Shah Abbas. It covers basically the founding of the dynasty under Ismail to the reign of Shah Abbas. Uh, it's in two volumes. You can find it online uh, in a PDF. Uh, it's it's been it was published in the 1930s, 1940s, I think, so it's been out for a long time. Uh, and also uh, the works of a historian named Rudy Mate. Uh, he's written a few books. The uh, main one uh, is Persia in Crisis, and that discusses basically the decline of the Safavids, but it gives you a good idea about the, you know, kind of the institutions of the empire and the problems that they had. And, uh, yeah, so I, I think that's all from me. Uh, that's uh, I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. And um, I will uh, talk to you guys in the next video.